These are tinfoil phonographs made in 1879 and 1880 by Urbain Fondin in France. Fondin was one of the first commercial producers of tinfoil phonographs in the world, uh, contemporary with Sigmund Bergman and uh, Bramer Brothers and Alex Poole and a few others in the United States. One nice thing about phone down machines from a collector's standpoint today is that he's relatively well documented, certainly more so than most producers in Europe or even in the U.S. at the time. Uh, it's not known if phone down may have started making machines as early as 1878, shortly after Edme Hardy. Uh, it is certain, however, it's been documented that he was in business at least as early as 1879. And it's also very well known that he went bankrupt in April of 1881. So these are clearly among the earliest tinfoil machines ever made. Fondant sold machines both directly and through resellers, such as Ducrete and Boiva. This is a catalog from Arsène Boiva from 1880. Both Ducrete and Boivin catalogs use the same engraving to illustrate the uh, Fonda. Boivin also sold the very rare weight-driven version of the Fonda, of which only one example survives in a museum in France. The fact that Fonda was well known as a manufacturer of phonographs is evident by the fact that his name is used as a selling point in the Boivin catalog. You can see that there's a difference between these two machines, even though they're fundamentally the same. Um, they're both about uh, 10 inches by 7 inches in a base with 3.5 inch diameter mandrels. The early 1879 version is distinguished by the way it is painted with a sort of typical black finish with gilt decoration. Uh, when phone down started having financial difficulties in 1880, he decided to cheapen production by switching to a lead-based paint called Minium, which has a bronze color, as you can see on the right. However, at the same time as cheapening the cost of production, he did make one improvement in the machine by adding a small curved piece in front of the reproducer to keep it from tilting too far forward. This prevented damage to the horn which was unfortunately common with the earlier machine where there was nothing to prevent it from falling all the way forward. Both the 1879 and 1880 versions of the phone down tinfoil are actually extremely well made. They feature a couple of very important uh, improvements to the earliest machines, one being notably that the speaker tilts rather than levers out from the side. This makes it much easier to keep the adjustments uh, correct. There are screws on either side of the speaker, including a lock nut on this version, which was removed from the 1880 version, which allow centering the stylus by moving the speaker back and forth. This adjustment screw in the center of the speaker, also with a lock nut, permits setting the depth of the stylus in the grooves of the mandrel. And both machines also feature a throwout lever which allows for the speaker, for the mandrel, to be quickly moved from one side to another. This avoids the necessity of having to manually rewind it at the end of a recording. As mentioned earlier, Fondin filed for bankruptcy in 1881, 26th of April to be precise. It's listed as Fondin, fabricant de phonographe. The final decree was entered in May. So Fondin's business was very short-lived, and it's clear that all of his machines are extremely early.
After Fondown's bankruptcy in 1881, Eugène Ducreté found himself with uh, no supplier of phonographs, so he ended up going into business for himself and essentially copied Fondown's design. Uh, it's virtually identical in size, all of the basic features are the same. However, he simplified it, made it considerably less elegant. Instead of the curved upright supports for the mandrel, it just has squared off blocks. The base is also much simpler, but it still has the same overall appearance and the same basic operating method methodology. This particular one has a flywheel, which is unusual. Only a couple of Ducretes are known to have flywheels. Ducreté remained in production all the way up till at least 1895, so his machines can be found quite late. This one is identifiable as early by the fact that it's stamped E. Ducreté à Paris. Later ones were Ducreté et Compagnie, and then later um, Ducreté formed a business with Lejeune and stamped them Ducreté and Lejeune. All of the Ducreté machines were signed. Phone down typically was not signed, although there is one in the collection of the Bibliothèque Nationale in Paris that is very prominently signed with Phone Down's name. I'm going to do a small demonstration of the 1879 Phone Down. This machine has the original stylus and original diaphragm. I have, of course, replaced the um, gaskets. But it works remarkably well for a very small machine and one without a flywheel. It's certainly much harder to keep a steady speed than with a flywheel, but it does work very effectively. Although it was made with a very small horn, I find that uh, all tinfoil phonographs work better with a recording horn and reproducing horn to help direct the sound. Hello, hello, hello. Mary had a little lamb, its fleece was white as snow. And everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. Ha, ha, ha!